So now we have the fundamental law of cosines, we have the law of sines. There is one last relationship that is going to be useful for deriving the coordinate transformations. This doesn't have a fancy name, we just call it the arc and angle formula. Consider this triangle A, B, and C, and now prolong along the arc AC to a point D so that AD has 90 degrees. So if we use the triangle ABD, let us use the fundamental law of cosines in here. We have that the cosine D is the cosine of the opposite side here. So that's 90 times cosine a little c plus sine pi over 2 sine a little c times cosine of big A. Now cosine of pi over 2 is of course 0 and sine of pi over 2 is 1. So this reduces to cosine of D is equal to sine of C times cosine of big A. Now the other way to find the cosine of little d is from the triangle CBD. From CBD, you will have that cosine of D is equal to cosine of uh, 90 minus B, cosine of A plus sine of 90 minus B, cosine of A, cosine of pi minus C, because that's the angle here. That's if this is the angle C, this angle here is 180 minus C. So resolving the pi over twos, this becomes sine a little b cosine a minus cosine a little b, sine a little a, and cosine a big C. So these are two expressions for cosine d. Put them both, and you find sine c cosine big A is equal to sine a little b cosine a little a minus cosine a little b, sine a little c, cosine a big c. And that's the angle and arc formula. Notice that you can use the dual triangle relations to change this from side to angle. If you use a prime is equal to pi minus a, you flip the sides by the angles, and then you have the sine of big C cosine of little a is equal to sine of big B cosine of big A plus cosine of big B sine of big A cosine of little c. So that proves the last formula. So now we have these fundamental relations. They're called Gauss groups. We have from group one, the fundamental law of cosines for the sides. Group two is the same, but is the fundamental law of cosines for angles. You get the group two from the group one by applying the law of the dual triangle. Have group three, which is the arc and angle formula, also called the five consecutive elements. And the group four is the same, but with the dual. And group five is the law of sines. Um, so you can choose here based on how many sides and how many angles you have given and how you relate them, which is the group that you're going to use to solve a particular problem. With that, let's pass on then to finally applying these equations for transforming between the coordinate systems.